now just quickly. Look, you're probably gathered by now. I don't do a lot of huge composites. This is my favourite composite. This guy's an oral surgeon. He did this while he and I were drinking in Port Hedland. And um, <coughs> it wasn't Alex. Uh, and, um, you know, we've done a giant composite there, okay? I've, this patient is worried about diastema, diastomata. We've done a few bits of composite in approximately, so we've gone from that to that. Now, just like I've gone doing that. So again, we've gone before and after. Same there, got rid of that. <coughs> you know, I'm sure there's better, you know, you, people can do better, but it certainly, she was happy. And when I say people can do better, this is from one of the flies. Now, you know, you guys all know Coachman and, and Magnet and oh, Jeff Knight and all these gurus are composite. And what I see is in these flies are these fantastic results from that to that. I've only ever seen those in books. There's another one. I mean, I know we're correcting, or they're correct. This has just come across my desk not long ago. And forget the angle, but they've gone from that sort of thing to that. Well, I'm, un I'm quite unlucky. I suppose if they were that good, I, would, I don't get to see them. But what I see is that. It's an ex-nurse of mine. This, this patient, her dad's a dentist. And she had hyperplastic enamel, and he's jolly these along. And he's out, you can see, you probably can't see it very well, but he's out of composite in patches all the way along over the years. So, yes, they, they're inexpensive, you don't need local. Doing one hit, and they're conservative. I don't do or offer that kind of treatment, I let other people do it. Really, that simple. It's not what I do. Um, you know, I don't think that's that repairable when you see the difference in what's been added. Then don't question your technique sensitive. They discolour with you know, time, they're porous. I don't think they're reversible. The reason I don't think they're reversible is that these patients are told, look, we can do a composite veneer. If you don't like it, we'll, we'll get rid of it. And there might be no, no, no tooth prepping. Well, that sounds good. But I'm not yet in 30 years seen a patient that had a composite veneer done for whatever reason they needed that veneer and they needed it because it's a peg lateral or it's hyperplastic enamel or the wrong shape or whatever. I'm not seeing one of those patients that had the veneer removed and say, I'll stay with what I got. If, if this is reversal and they don't like it, they'll go on and do a ceramic veneer or crown. So it might be technically reversible, it's not patient reversible because they won't stay with that. I mean, I might have seen one patient saying, I wish I could just get these off and stay how I was. That's, that's really one patient in 30 years because if they had the veneers done for a reason and, and um, you know, if they don't work, they want something else instead. They don't want to go back to what they had or they wouldn't have done it in the first place. Make sense? You know, I see all these wonderful composites. The other thing is, look, there's all these um, glue-on, snap-on, on and off veneers. Now, has anyone done any U veneers? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, there's U veneers, there's, they're all prefabricated. These are Edelweiss veneers. And you get a bunch of shells like that, and a whole, there's a kit, etch, bond, etc. You can always get etch and bond with everything you buy. And you get this centering of, of a composite, and they get a shell like that. And what you do is you get the right shape. Now, this is my idea of Edelweiss. Anyone know the sound of music? Well, that's the Edelweiss. But now they do, he just died recently. So you get this sort of template and you choose what size fits. And in case you don't know which is up or down, they're marked up. So you can tell which way to put it. This is straight off the, off the packaging. And so you get up and you choose what size you want. And then you choose what colour you want. There's a template there of six colours, A1, A2, etc. You then rough on the inside of the shell and shape it. And then you fill it with this composite. And you go blog, snap, you etch, etch the tooth, uh, and you get those, those sort of veneers. Okay? They're, they're your edel, you can Google it, they're your edelweiss veneers. If you have a look, this is quite interesting. This technique will not replace indirect, conventional, custom made ceramic veneers, but rather offer a one visit cost of return to direct freehand build up. So you're not trying to say it's a competing with lab veneers, it's an alternative to hand veneers. There's a new one which is snap on small. These you just snap on and off. So if you've got a hot date, you put those on and then you, you take them out in the morning. Um, and so they're only $320 US. There's no shots. In other words, 
uh, it's US, no prepping, it's removable. You can, you, can, you can even eat while you're wearing a snap-on smile. So they've got those. 2,800 dentists have done it and it's only 320 US. You've got a glam smile, which is another uh, competitor to that. And again, you can put them on and take them off. And this one doesn't need a dentist, so you guys won't be needed anymore because the lab does it, okay? They're lab direct fabricated, okay? So it's a press on and there they go, they go on and off. Now serving clients in Perth. I don't know who does it. <laughs> There's your press on veneer. So you put it on and go on your hot date. Take your false bra off um, and whatever. There, there's some more veneers I saw. These are more like the snap on, snap off. And you see, you, um, I think this has been used to charge per pin. And so, you know, there's a lot of money in them hills. And uh, yeah, this has came across my desk. Um, this is the sort of case, this is a television newsreader. Um, and so, you know, I think that's the more reasonable where the teeth aren't too bad. That one's had an endo, that lateral. This is malformed. There's all different colours there. So I don't mind doing veneers on someone like that, okay? Um, the downside is that this lateral is going to need a crown, a post crown. So now you've got the situation where you've got the crown in between a bunch of veneers. So there she's all finished up. And there's the post. And I'll briefly mention posts um, down the track, but the issue arises, and I've heard this in lectures, if you've got a, a, a crown with veneers either side or vice versa, would you do the veneer first, or would you do the crown first, or would you do them together? So who's going to do, uh, who's going to do the crown first? No one. Who's going to do the veneer first? No one. Who's going to phone a friend? Or 50-50? So um, think about it. You can say, we've done them together. If I really had to do one before the other, I'd probably do the veneer first and then the crown. The reason I do that is the crown's got more flexibility in terms of what colours you can match and build up, etc. So, but these are done together. And they're made out of the same material. That's the other thing. And the other thing which we'll talk about, I'll mention now, these, this is a gold post. Oh my God, a gold post. But they're opaque. So that that part is not gold, that part is tooth coloured or white. And, and the way we do that is we use a bonding gold and we opaque it with ceramic. And so all that is under there is this opaque ceramic. So now it's tooth coloured, which then doesn't affect the colour. And that's just close up. I think, you know, there's not much difference between the veneer and the crown. Yeah, I just talked about that. And that's the sort of case where you've got some hyperplastic enamel and I'm happy to do veneers like that. Again, that, you, know, you can do all sorts of things. You can try and acid etch those. You can do direct composite. But I'm happy to do that. There she's finished up. Now, I'm going to... I'm a bit struggling for time here. So I'm going to skip about preps, OK? Preps are preps. If you want to ask me after, we'll, we'll do that. There's just a bunch of preps on that previous patient. Uh, I'll just mention we do, you know, half, half to a mil reduction. I don't break the contact point. You need a sort of heavy shoulder or chamfer because porcelain is not very strong in thin sections. So you don't want a micro, you don't want a feather edge or a knife edge or any of that. Um, if you've got darker teeth, you're going to have to make it thicker or you're going to have to use more opaque, which doesn't look very lifelike. And you've got to assess, this is really important, but it's obvious. If the tooth's sticking further out, you're going to have to prep it more. If the tooth's sticking further in, you don't need much prepping. So you don't have one prep for everything. You just assess it. And I only overlap the incisal edge if you're going to make the tooth longer. Okay? Now, there's all different preps, and you hear people talk. The other thing is, if you go over the incisal edge, you have to consider path insertion. If you, if you don't go over the incisal edge, you can come from labial direction. And that, ling that slight undercut on the gingival third on the labial surface as it comes in, it doesn't affect you because you're coming labially. If you're coming incisally, that becomes an undercut. And you've got to get rid of that, otherwise you can't insert the, the veneer. So you're going to have to prep the middle of that um, two for a lot more. And there's just e extending the length basically. She had a bunch of veneers and didn't like it, sorry. And 
the only thing when you go over the incisal edge <coughs> is you've got to be aware of um, your uh, centric stops. So the centric stops are there, they're well away from it. And what I do is I try and merge the three things, the tooth, the cement, and the porcelain and the cement in between. The way I do that is a heatless green stone, a red hand piece, and you just go over the three of them and become one. It works really well, it works extremely well. And there she is sort of finished up, can't show her face. And there is before and after. And my cementation, I've got a kit, there's lots of kits out there. It's got trying paste, it's got the silane, there's an, two different paste to mix together because it's got a much longer shelf life. Um, and it's got the various colours. The problem, you know, the translucence and the dark, the yellow. If you're relying on these colours to make the veneer look good, you, uh, you know, you just have to redo the veneer basically. That'll get you 10% better result, but it won't make a bad veneer look good. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a nice kit. I like it. This one talking about finishing. These are um, heatless stones. There's green, white, um, and they're brown and green points. Now, isn't it, and there's a red hand piece and a scalpel. So who owns a red hand piece, red band? Not many. I've said this for 20 years. I, I got four of them. I can't live without it. I use these with these stones for polishing composite. Crown preps, occlusal adjustment, amalgam, uh, uh, veneers, and this is the one where I go over the three things together and blend the three of them in. But I know when I was at the dental school, they've also got these brown and green points and white stones, etc. What they do is they use them in a slow contra angle handpiece. If you use them in a slow contra angle handpiece, they're useless. Throw them away. Throw that and the handpiece away together. You need to do it in one of these sort of intermediary red band hand pieces. So they come as a friction grip, like a high speed. They don't go in the slow speed. They go in the, in the red band. Conversely, if you buy yourself these burrs because they're the ones you want or need, and you put one of these in a high speed because they'll fit in there, you'll shatter the burr. It'll go inside the patient's mouth and go into a million pieces because it can't go at the high revs that the, uh, the RPM, the high speed go at, they'll shatter. They can only go in sort of this sort of revs. And the other thing is you can use them slowly, sort of like a washing action without too much pressure, in which case you can turn the water off. These are heatless green stones, but I still go lightly or use water. And these are brown and green points. There's an ultra green, which gives you a BS shine. I don't use those. Um, but they've also got um, silicon ones that are, are, are meant to be um, heatless, but they're not much. These are Shofu, by the way, not that I get. Um, uh, you know, these are fantastic. I go through dozens of them. And what I use to um, trim the margin with any flash is a scalpel. Just go into the sulcus if you like and works really well. So we try and merge that into one and we're using these various bits. The other thing I can't see, I can't work without magnification. Now I know you young guys can, but I don't believe that. I'll show you why. That was that previous or one of these pictures and that's times one magnification. Now all I've done is taken the same picture and double it. So I haven't sort of increased the camera, I've doubled that. There's times three, same picture. There's times four. So you know, anyone